Hello everyone, let's consider the example related to cumulative distribution function. In this problem, they give you the probability density functions f of x equal to 0.3 times e to the minus 0.3x when x is greater than or equal to 0 and f of x equal to 0 when x is less than 0. They ask you to find the formula for the cumulative distribution function capital F of t and at the end, we're going to use the information of capital F of t to sketch the graph for it. To do this problem, let's take a look at the formula for capital F of t, CDF. This is equal to the integral from negative infinity to t of the probability density function. In this case, the probability density function is given in form of exponential distribution. And you have the interval when x is less than 0, the function is equal to 0, but when x is greater than or equal to 0, the function is equal to 0.3 times e to the neg negative 0.3x. That means you have to consider two intervals. The first one is t less than 0, and the second one is t greater than or equal to 0. Now let's consider the first interval. When t is less than 0, you have capital F of t is equal to the integral from negative infinity to t of f of x dx. And this integral related to probability density function. When t is less than 0, the probability density function has the variable x to be less than 0 as well from the probability density function given to you right here. So therefore, the integral becomes integral from negative infinity to t of 0 dx and is 0. Now when t is greater than or equal to 0, what's going to happen? You're going to use the same formula, capital F of t, going from negative infinity to t of f of x dx. But to get to the interval of t greater than or equal to 0, you have to break down into the integral from negative infinity to 0 of f of x dx plus the integral from 0 to t, for t is greater than or equal to 0 of f of x dx. Now from the probability density function one more time, the value of f of x in the interval of x less than 0 is equal to 0, so therefore the value of the integral is 0, and you left with the integral from 0 to t of f of x dx. The probability density function is 0.3 times e to the minus 0.3x dx. So from here you can find the antiderivative of the functions and then you evaluate the antiderivative between 0 and t. So that is 0.3 times the integral from 0 to t of e to the minus 0.3x dx. The antiderivative of e to the minus 0.3x is equal to 1 over minus 0.3 times e to the minus 0.3x evaluate between 0 and t. So 0.3 and 0.3 you cancel out you're left with minus e to the negative 0.3x evaluate between 0 and t. So this is minus e to the minus 0.3t minus negative e to the minus 0.3. So you have minus e to the negative 0.3t. So minus with minus here it's become plus and e to the 0 is 1. So this is 1 minus e to the negative 0.3t. So the CDF is 0 when t is less than 0. And it is 1 minus e to the negative 0.3t when t is greater than or equal to 0. Let's take a look at the properties of the CDF. 
the lab end behavior is equal to zero, right? That one is check. But for the right end behavior, we don't see that in the form of this CDF. However, if you let t go to infinity, what's going to happen? When t approach infinity, the function f of t approaches 1. So it still have the same right end behavior as suggested in the properties, right? How can I get one right here, right? For example, if you just substitute infinity into the place of t, this is can be written as 1 minus 1 over 0.3 times infinity. So infinity is the concept of a very big number, not an actual number. But if you want, you can try out a few big number like a 10 millions or a hundred millions or even a thousand in this case to see that what happened to the value of this term when one divided by a big number. And it turned out that this is going to be equal to zero. So you're going to have one as t approach to infinity. So therefore, using that information, you can graph the behavior of CDF. So this one is t, this one is capital F of t, zero right here. So on the left hand side of zero, the function is zero, so I draw like this. When t is greater than or equal to zero, you have the function 1 minus e to the negative 0.3t. And using the calculator, you can confirm this for me. When t is greater than 0, the function is 1 minus e to the negative 0.3t, and it has this type of behavior. But as t approaches infinity, the function approaches 1. So that means the function will go on forever without intersecting the horizontal line 1. This is the end of the example. Please let me know if you have any questions.